Alright, hi guys. Welcome to the channel. Um, on the Master Meta website, I posted a Diamond 1 branded Despia decklist. And I got a few comments like asking me about, you know, maybe like my YouTube channel, maybe I guess like some videos. Um, and I attached like my ID for my profile, but uh, I assumed that more people wanted to watch, I guess, voice, voice commented over content uh, from me. Um, I don't usually do uh, content like this uh, much at all, but I figure that you know maybe maybe it would be helpful to people learning more about the deck, um, understanding like I guess the mindset that goes into my plays. Um, do note that all of this stuff is going to be non-edited and just long-form content because I don't feel like <laughs> really investing time into making stuff like that, and this is kind of. My channel, as you can see, is kind of just filled with stuff that I just toss into my channel and just say, you know, I'll just record it for good measure, because why not? Um, so I hope, like, my audio and quality and everything is, you know, sufficient enough for you to learn, but, uh, to learn from. But, uh, anyways, he was my Diamond 1 decklist, um, for Branded Despia. Um, shout out to that one user that posted that decklist that had Mischief of the Gnomes. This, this card is crazy. Um. But I'll just go through pretty much my decklist first and then go over like around like five replays. Um, if you do want to see more, I'll probably upload them anyways. If you want to see them more with like content or commentary explaining uh, some of my decision making process and maybe even some mistakes that I have made in some of those duels and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I guess feel free to let me know. Um, yeah, let's go through it. So first card, uh, Cyframe Driver and the Cyframe Gear Gamma package. Um, I feel like this package is a little bit underrated. Um, it's definitely not as strong as it could be because Gamma is only at 2 and not 3. Um, as opposed to other formats like the TCG that has Gamma at 3. Um, but overall, I think this card is pretty good against Sprite going 2nd. And even going 1st, if you draw this card with something like Branded Opening or Branded Fusion, um, or even Allure Darkness, it's very easy for you to um, check certain cards like Ash Blossom or Maxi. Um, with Gamma, and everyone everyone knows like how lethal stuff like Ash Blossom on Branded Fusion is, so why not just play a card that protects your Branded Fusion from not be not being negated, while also acting as a light target for Albion in the extra deck. So I think th I think this card is actually like pretty good, but a lot of people are sleeping on it. Like some people are running it, but not a lot of people <laughs> do decide to run it. Um, and this is my only hand trap in the deck. Um, as you can see, there's no, no, nothing like Maxi and Ash Blossom, um, and at, at least for me personally, I, I still have called by to stop stuff um, like that. But for Maxi, Maxi is in a weird state where it's like, yes, it's a very powerful and broken card, but not every game does it actually resolve, and at worst, it does trade one for one, which is actually like not bad. But personally. I wanted to keep my decklist slim while also having like more reliable like answers and cards that I felt like were active like almost all the time. And Max C like never resolving just never really felt that good for me. Um, Ash Blossom on the other hand can be useful to stop stuff like Max C, but as a hand trap right now, it does kind of suck. You can use it to hit Runic Fountain, but overall, it's uh, those two hand traps. I think running full gas is pretty much the way to go, and si even Cyframe Gear, Cyframe Driver, uh, never really bricked me hard enough to the point where I regretted playing these three hand traps. Um, next up is Despian Comedy. I think this card is pretty good to dodge targeting and stuff like that on uh, your fusion summon monsters like Lubelion or even your um, Alubear, but. You can opt to cut this card, but I, I think it's nice to have as an alternative send target off of Branded Fusion. Uh, also to note, I, I'm assuming that you know what most of these cards do, so I won't I won't go too deeply into how all the different cards work. You could probably look that up on your own time. But uh, I'll mostly explain the decisions behind the ratios for some of these cards. <laughs> um, Destiny Tragedy. This card is actually... I think you should be playing this at 3. A lot of people, even in gas builds that have cards like Allure of Darkness that help you really start drawing and searching like crazy, only sometimes they only play two, and I feel like that's incorrect because Tragedy is pretty much one of your best banishes, and it also acts as a 
starter in a sense when for example you combine tragedy with something like polymerization allure of darkness um even branded opening getting tragedy out of the hand to start your plays is really important and i feel like playing less less than three doesn't really make more sense because you're making your deck um, less consistent um so this, this is technically sort of a starter not a one card starter but it, it's it helps you search your relevant cards uh in your branded in your despia engine i mean uh, i'm playing three edge of chain um i'm only really playing three because um sometimes like you do want to see this in your hand but it does have the chance to be bricky so i could understand doing something like playing only two edge of chain but realistically i think three is fine um, even if you draw multiple of these, you have one as an allure banish. Um, and uh, yeah, you don't really want to get into a situation, or I don't really want to get into a situation where, you know, maybe I have, I have Patrick uh, in hand and I don't have any more targets in deck to be searching. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll tackle that situation later. Um, three Albaz, I think this is required. A lot of people I see sometimes still run two of this, and I think that's actually incorrect. Um, in the TCG, it was already solved in, in a format like this that you should be running Albaz at three because seeing Albaz in hand with a, a way to poly um, with Albaz really helps you, one, have another way to get to Mirror Jade, but also have a way to get to Mirror Jade that plays around Ash on Branded Fusion. Like I said before, and Ash on Brand Diffusion is like pretty lethal for this deck. Like that happening is like the worst feeling in the world. So you want to have scenarios where you can actually still play the game and raw fusing Albaz in hand is pretty important. Even if you don't even need the Albaz, you could always maybe discard it to the graveyard, send it off of like a lower darkness or something. But um having more answers to a disruption on your plays is really important for a gas build like this one. Um, two Alibur, I, I don't have to explain this probably. Um, one Dramaturge, you can cut this, it doesn't come up that often, but a 3k body with um, a negate on it can be uh, pretty useful. Um, the fact that you can also like keep special summoning out after you use them for a fusion material is really good. Um, but yeah, if you don't, if you don't like Dramaturge, um, feel free to cut it, but uh, you know I, I like the guy. He's he's pretty cool. Um, Ad lib. I mean, this is necessary. Um, two polymerization. Uh, I think there's an argument to play three, um, but the problem with playing three is that it could be you could have scenarios where polymerization by itself is technically a soft brick. Um, yes, you do want to see poly a, a way to poly with Albaz in hand. But the, an important thing about poly is that you also need materials. And having a polymerization with known materials is pretty bad. Polymerization is one of those cards that kind of needs almost like a three card combo to really like, you know, put a body on board. So stuff like seeing like three fight for Patrick, like this card is something that you want to see. And poly is almost something that you kind of want to only get when you need it. Um... I think for a larger list, like if you're playing 45, 50, even 60 cards, you have to be playing 3 Polymerization. I feel like if you don't play 3 Polymerization, you're kind of trolling yourself. But, um, yeah. I, I think 2 is fine. Um, next up, Foolish Burial. Besides being a starter to send Tragedy to the Graveyard to search you Alibur, this card can also be used interestingly enough to send other cards like Despian Comedy to the graveyard. Even, um, even Dramaturge. Um, and you can always like bring them back using stuff like, um, for example, Dramaturge that I mentioned earlier. You could bring it back using stuff like Branded in Red, which can be really helpful in some scenarios. Besides just being a starter, you could even send Albaz, which turns on your Branded in Red if you really need to. Um, Gold Sarcophagus is also really good but not as good as other starters like a third Alubur can be. I wish we had one still. Um, this instead banishes your tragedy and you only really have a target for this. Um, this is only really here to add more engine consistency. Um, but yeah, if you don't have Gold Sarcophagus, you can cut it. 
but I like maxing out on as many of these like sort of one card starters per se as possible. Um, three of Lord Darkness. This is basically Pot of Greed in this deck. Um, most most times, um, I don't really understand why people only play two of this in some lists. It kind of makes no sense to me. It's not even once per turn either, so it's almost like saying like you're only playing two Pot of Greed when you could be playing three. Um, this card, when if you see this card with Tragedy in hand, it's 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 a, it's a wrap. Basically, this card is just so good. Um, and even if you don't see a card like Tragedy, which pluses you off of being banished in hand, you could always like toss like um, soft bricks that you don't really need or duplicates in hand that don't really do anything for you. Like if you draw multiple Edgem chains, you could just toss one out and just be like, you know what, two new two new cards. Um, patchwork, like I mentioned. Um, some people cut down on this, but I, I think Patchwork is the best... It is the best part of the Poly Engine that you want to see. Edge Imp Chain kind of bricks you because it doesn't... You need to get it out of the hand, which isn't guaranteed every time. Um, but Patchwork is just strictly like... You go plus one, right? You add Polymerization and Edge Imp. Like, this card is literally insane. Um, Branded Fusion is Branded Fusion. Super Polymerization, I'm still playing this card because um, you, you will see in some replays that the target for this Super Poly is Earth Golem Adagnister. And the purpose behind this card is that it's a Cybers and a Link. Uh, it requires a Cybers monster and one Link monster. This is really important because some a, a lot of sprite boards do like to end on stuff like Elf plus IP. And being able to remove like two of their most important bodies for disruption off of one card is really good. It is like a two for one deal and you get a body on board which you could help use to make Chimera. Like that is pretty valuable. Um, I'm playing Call by the Grave, you know, necessary. Branded Opening, necessary. Branded in Red, necessary. Um, Mischief of the Gnomes. This card has both an on-field trap effect and a effect that can banish itself from the graveyard. And basically it reduces monsters levels in hand by one. Um, and that's pretty huge. Uh, what this means is that um, yes it doesn't reduce levels of monsters that might be like special summoned from the deck or something like that. But stuff like they, they search out, um, stuff that they draw into, um, stuff starting in the hand is all reduced by one. Sprites, they're not le they're level one in hand now. Um, you know, you have stuff like Exo Sister, which functions using level four monsters, and now they're level three. Um, even Sword Soul now has to deal with the fact that all their levels are reduced by one. So now they're stuck making like these weird, um, I guess like having these weird lines where they might have access to stuff like Yazi or Chao Feng, but they might not have, you know, very easy access to stuff like Qi Zhao and things of that nature because, you know, l reduce level by one, it's like, well, what's my play now, right? I can't normal summon Mo Yi and then normal summon a token and make a, a Synchro 8. That ends up being a Synchro 7, <laughs> right? So this card is actually really good going first and is also not bad to draw into later on. It is kind of bricky because it's a trap, but the fact that it has a banish effect means that you could even turn this on later in the game for one turn and your opponent is just going to look at this and be like, what the hell, right? And drawing this first, like, the amount of sprite players on the ladder, like, kind of warrants, like, in my opinion, cards like these that just blow the entire matchup out of the water. Uh, Branded Banishment, this is just, you know, searchable super poly, basically, but it's also a monster reborn. It's pretty good. Um, like I said, Earth Golem, Attic Nister, I don't really miss Starving Venom, not in this format, never came up for me. Um, Draco Sepelia, this is necessary. Titanoclad, this is not that necessary, but I like having the utility as a different uh, send target um, instead of just Albion, while also having a way to get or a special summon or search Albaz to your hand. Um, if you want a budget version, you can play Brigrand. Oh. You can play this guy. Um, I mean, this guy's rare. He, he does pretty much the same thing. I'm not really using Titanoclad for the on-field stuff that often, so you don't have to worry about it that much. Um, three Albion, 
you can play with two, but I, I found that there were some scenarios where it's like, I really wish I had a third. Um, because sometimes games get like really grindy, and it also becomes really annoying if Runic starts banishing your Albazes from your deck. And, um, yeah, like, <laughs> three, I think, is, it is a little bit luxury, but it's pretty nice. If you don't want to play this, I mean, you could play, you know, like, Burgrand, like I said, if you really want to. You can play Alba, Alba Linatus, this guy. He, he's a little bit worse, but he searches, um, Branded Fusion, basically. Um, I think one card I don't have in my extra deck that I'll, I'll cover is this guy, but um, to continue, Coretis, this guy is pretty good, um, the fact that he has a floating effect and can change all monsters attack to zero is actually like kind of helpful for clearing uh, sprite boards and also even math mech boards, um, and the floating effect means that your opponent basically has to respond to this, um, in some form, usually, uh, and them removing it means that they have to contend with another interruption in the form of Albaz. Or you could add a Despia monster, which basically turns this guy into like a unique way to get to um, Aluber or even like Adlib or any of these cards if you really need to. Two Masquerade. Sometimes I, I wish having a, I wish I was playing three, but for the most part, two will just serve you like the entire game or the entire season rather. I, you don't really need to play three, but um, this guy, this guy is nice. Um, ending on him and or Draco Stapelia is like really good this format and you really want to end on these cards uh, as much as possible on your turn one board. Two Mirror Jade, I don't have to explain this. Two Lubelion, I, I don't really have to explain this. You could play with one Lubelion, but I think two is necessary now because um, honestly I was getting hit by a ton of hand traps and being like there are situations where you kind of now need the second. Before it was not this bad but I feel like now it's like dang my Lubelion got negated like I need another one in my deck um two Chimera you you need to that's all I'm gonna say you you definitely need to like um oops did not mean to do that um and then the one card that I don't have in this deck list right now is Preskenion um if you've watched some of DK's content maybe you've seen like some of his um weekly tournament streams uh there is a helper in the master duel meta discord uh who goes by the name of vector that really loves this card and you've probably like seen it in action this card absolutely demolishes the sword soul matchup and helps you push for otk like really easily if this guy comes out you're probably winning the game um but personally it rarely comes up um and I don't really go into Sword Soul that much, personally. Not like most of the latter sprites, so I didn't really see a situation where Proskenia came up and I missed him. So I cut him. Um, you can play him if you want, but yeah. And, and that's that's it for the deck list. Um, I didn't use this the entirety of Diamond One, uh, going to Diamond One from D5, but this was pretty much the like final list that I use that really pushed me uh, to get there. Um, yeah, let's go over some replays. Uh, I think I'll go only five today. Uh, don't want to extend this too long. Um, but yeah. So this first matchup is against Sprite, I believe. Yeah, pure Sprite. So I'll, I'll kind of speed it up. This is not really a Sprite video, and I don't actually play Sprite. At least not yet, so I can't really explain to you like what is correct and what they shouldn't have done. Blah, 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 related to the render board. But um, as you see, they're kind of turboing out interruptions. Like, they have IP Masquerina. They have Sprite Red, which is a monster negate. They have Smashers now, which is a, a banish on my card. This is like pretty daunting for a fact that I have basically no disruption for them. So I start off with Twyfer Patchwork. No, I'm just, you know, searching out cards, getting my hand ready. 
I'm pretty sure I activate branded opening here. Yeah. So I activate branded opening. And it's important to notice that I branded an opening not for Alibur, but for Tragedy. Um, the entire reasoning for this is that Sprite Red is a monster negate that also destroys. So I don't want to be put in a scenario where I activate Alibur, I just waste his effect. Um, well, I guess technically what I could do is um, I could chain block it with the Edgem chain that I just sent to the graveyard, which um, adds me a Fright for Patrick back on the new chain. So it would be Alibur chain like one, Edgem chain like two. But um, I'll use Tragedy. Well, you'll, you'll see here. I'll use Tragedy as a way to force my opponent to respond um, in some way to me using this body as a field for Chimera and then having follow-up through Tragedy, which also chain blocks that Chimera, as a way to get to Alibur. Um, so as you can see, I actually chained the Edgeimp um, when I didn't need to. Um, and that goes back to the Guardian Chimera situation where what I want to do here actually, because um, my opponent doesn't really have a response to this, they have to just let me poly here. Um, I want to do Guardian Chimera and contend with removing one of their interruptions. Um, for example, Smashers. Uh, doing so would be pretty valuable and also give me more gas in hand to work with, specifically two draws. Um, so what I wanted the chain link to be in this scenario was Guardian Chimera, chain link 1, Tragedy chain link 2, and then Edgem chain, chain link 3. And then my opponent would have to either watch me do that or just negate something. Um, um, unfortunately, Elf does, you know, protect the monsters that it points to, which is kind of annoying. But, um, yeah, I end up burning the Edgem chain effect really early when I didn't need to, which means that I kind of have to be put in this weird situation. Yeah, so he recognizes that Guardian Chimera is probably going to hit sm uh, Sprite Smashers. And so he banishes my tragedy, which gives me access to Alibur. And for some reason, he lets us through. Um, personally, I don't know why he did that. Um, I guess it could be the case that I have Branded Fusion in hand right now. And he's really scared of uh, him maybe, um, you know, negating the Alibur. And then he's just a sitting duck because I go Lubellion, you know, shuffle back, fusion summon, blah, 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 and he can't negate it because he already used it. Um, because maybe what my opponent no notices is that I use Tragedy, so there's maybe nothing that I can have to chain block on the Lubellion summon. Because usually Lubellion would be like Lubellion chain link 1, Tragedy chain link 2. Um, you've probably seen it like a ton of times before, but that's usually, you know, the bog standard play. But I guess he might recognize that, oh, he already used Tragedy this turn, he can't block, he can't chain block with the Lubellion, so I'm just free to negate that monster when it comes out, or any of the other fusion summon monsters, like Albion. So I guess maybe that's what he's thinking, that he holds the red negate um, for when I actually activate Branded Fusion, and you'll see here that I, I basically punish him completely um, for that. So he Desperation IP Masqueranas into Unicorn. Um, I guess he doesn't want me to have bodies on the board maybe to fuse with, uh, which is fine. I, I guess he wasn't really playing anything else that was relevant. So as you can see here, I sent here um, Ad Libman of Desphia. I'm not really too scared about like um, anything that they could have because they don't really have any hand traps right now. And as you can see, I branded in red using the Lubelli and the Albaz to force myself to make a Mirror Jade. Um, and Lubellion is negated, so it won't shuffle back to make a monster. But I still am able to get Mirror Jade out because I have Brandon in red hand. And I basically just dismantle this entire board. And I think I... I think he has Jet in hand, as far as I'm aware. Um, yeah, and with Called By and Brandon in red, this board is pretty strong. Um, it does die to, you know, a single Called By. Um, but I had the Called By for his Ronin. And it seems like he didn't have the out. <laughs> and I 
believe that was my rank up game actually. But as I, as I said before, most of this will be unedited, so I hope like I'm covering everything that I need to. Um, you know, I, I recognize that some of these, some of this gameplay like might not be perfect, 100%. Uh, but you know, I hope it's like sufficient enough to learn from at least um, a thing or two. I'm not the best duelist in the world, but you know, <laughs> if people want to see gameplay, then you know, I'm here to help. So, in this game, they actually use like, a unique card called the Yamatako Orochi, which I can show right here. It's a normal speed. Um, what this does is that if they hand draw this, and they get it on the board, it can actually act as a level 8. So you could use a level 8 and a level 2 to make Baron the floor on your turn 1. And look at this. This guy has like Baron, IP, Elf. Back row. I'm not too sure if I, I was, you know, aware of the back row was, but yeah, I ripped Super Poly off the top, which is, <laughs> I mean, this card is absolutely insane. You get to see why, why Super Poly is just so useful. I'm honestly, I think this game would have been unplayable without it. Um, but the fact that I was able to remove potentially like up to two interruptions. Um, they didn't have access to red, so it wouldn't have been another interruption, but, you know, potentially it could have been. Being able to remove IP and elf, and clearing out the board, and then forcing battle phase to remove the carrot so they don't have any more negates except for Baron on board. I basically dismantled, like, 90% of the sprite board with just one card and the battle phase. And, um, forcing battle phase to also, like, remove negation cards like sprite carrot from the board is also like really important um especially when you also consider that a lot of their interruptions like ip mascarena elf reviving stuff like this stuff only works in the main phase main phase so working outside of the main phase and things like the battle phase maybe even the standby phase to do plays is like pretty useful um and i really think the sprite matchup is like a lot more interesting in the sense that you could Use the different phases as a way to um, break your opponent's board. So, Gold Sarcophagus, add Alibur, you know, it's pretty normal. Normal summon Alibur, blah blah blah. He doesn't negate Oh, he does negate it. So, he hits it with Imperm, which is why he's saving the Baron. And as you can see here, I don't shotgun the Branded Fusion. Um, I think it's important to recognize that. Uh, the most important thing for this deck is to basically get Branded Fusion to resolve like as cleanly as you can. So what I do here is that I have two bodies on board. There are two monsters on board, or two cards on board I guess rather that my opponent has. Uh, if I Polymerization here for Chimera, I can force the opponent to either say, look, I'm going to put a big body on the board that's going to pop your entire field and you have to do something about it now or else like you're getting board wiped and so my opponent recognizes that I could do Chimera chain link 1 edge of chain chain link 2 and absolutely like murder his board and he can't do anything about it so what he does is that he actually ha is forced to negate the polymerization and that exhausts all his negates activate brand fusion boom just like that. Even if my opponent had something like Ash Blossom, I have called by. So that hand was actually a little bit insane, and goes to show like why Super Poly is so useful. Um, granted, I don't think I would have won that duel without Super Poly. I mean, having the Baron on top of the regular Sprite board is like already like I thought I was going to lose that game. But I think it's it's definitely important to wait out uh, certain games because you'll never know like what that six card that you're gonna draw is. Like, you'll never know um, that you'll win games that you think were, like, unwinnable in the first place. Um, so obviously your opponent might put, like, lethal on the board and all they have to do is attack, and it's just like, okay, then I guess you can surrender there, but... Anyways, this is another game where... Uh, 
you know, playing Baron Dusty again. And you can see the usefulness of Albaz and that how he's actually not a brick. Um, in this scenario, I actually use him as a way to get to Mirror Jade uh, without the use of Grand Fusion. Now, granted, I didn't draw anything else useful, which means that I basically have to put a Mirror Jade up for the pass because I don't have any Albaz or Despy cards in the graveyard, so Branded and Red is useless. Um, Branded Banishment is also useless, and uh, he just imperms the Mirror Jade. Um, so I basically just shotgun the Mirror Jade after it gets negated. What this does is basically puts a, uh, an Albaz uh, fusion in the graveyard. Um, and I'm actually still able to use Mirror Jade next turn if they don't clear this guy. Um, so yeah, don't don't be afraid to just you know use the Mirror Jade effect like just to get a body in the graveyard. Um, there are some scenarios like let's let's say you're playing against Luanderees, they could actually remove cards from your graveyard. So maybe shotgunning it and uh, matchups like those is not that good. But I know I'm playing against a Sprite, and I really doubt that they have a way to remove the Albi on this follow up here. And so my opponent is taking a really weird line here. Um, and I do have a back row interruption. So what they do here is they actually go was they normally kiss kill frost, special the blue, blue special jet, jet search starter. And I guess they they already have the carrot or something. I, I wasn't paying that much attention, but regardless, this is five summons right here. And I guess they got baited by my back row, so they think, you know, this might be something that's pretty relevant. Like, maybe it's like an Imperm or something. And they want Gigantic to resolve. Fortunately for them, Gigantic will not resolve because I have Nibiru in hand. Um, um, and as you can see in my original decklist, I wasn't playing Nibiru. I was actually fooling around with different um, variants of the same decklist, basically, which had Maxi and Nibiru in it. Um, so usually Nibiru won't actually even resolve that much. Because um, it's not very good against Sprite because they lock both players into level 2, which is important. Um, so Nibiru is not actually that good, but he's also like a light target and you could fuse him with Titanic Cloud to do something funny, but... Um, yeah, I was just like fooling around with different uh, deck list options, but... Um, yeah, drawing Destiny Tragedy here in this scenario is really good. Um, this basically gives me access to my Despia side of the deck. Um, for example, Alibur, and drawing another monster here means that I can basically do a Chimera play to maybe pop a back row card here. So that's what I'm going to aim to do, because I do, I'm, I'm just respecting the fact that he has three back row cards. And I'm like, okay, starting Chimera, Despian Tragedy, Edgem Chain, Chain Link 3, and he responds with Called By on my Tragedy. Now I don't even have a Despia card in Grave. And then he droplets the Chimera, and because Droplet isn't targeting, I don't even get a Chimera pop either. So now I'm like, bro. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, this means, because I have no Despia monsters in my graveyard, or Fallen of Abbas monsters, I just have to go for Branded Banishment. Um, I actually didn't know what his back row was, so I sent Comedy to try and play around stuff like Imperm or something. You know, I needed my Lubellion to resolve. Yeah, now I do have a Despia Monster in Graveyard, but Branded Red is kind of useless on the board. Or I mean, it's not that useless, because I could go to Dragos Topelia, but... Um, because I have Droplet... Because I have Droplet, I'm thinking of a funny little play here. If I droplet my opponent's card, because they're on top deck mode, if I droplet the opponent's card, it should be over. Pretty much, game over. Um, I droplet like their normal summon, they can't do much, right? Um, and then I could use Brandon Banishment to summon back Mirror Jade and maybe fuse Chimera with something else that they have on the field. So this is like... And then, and then I also refresh the Mirror Jade Banish. So I basically have maybe like one, two, three interruptions on this board alone, if it resolves. And you see, I make a very bad mistake here. So, what could I possibly lose to here? Um, at the time, I was thinking that I could just Forbidden Droplet, 
send a monster. You know, there's no, there's nothing that they could do, right? Um, even if they have droplets, it still doesn't out my board. Um, if if this was droplets, I mean, if this was called by, like you know, they're they're still they're still done so. Um, so I end up dropping their kiss a kill, but there ends up being one card that I didn't account for, that I actually had no knowledge that they actually had set. They didn't even search it anywhere in the turn. They just happened to draw it. And you'll see what I get punished by. Yep, I send Mirror Jade. I think I derive it. And it ends up being Sprite Smashers. Um, this is pretty much a game losing mistake. Um, what I should have done is waited for them to either go for... I mean, they have to go for either like a Twin Link. Maybe they go for like Elf but or Gigantic. But realistically, like any of those lines, I just hit the, the monster that they special summoned with those two bodies with droplets, and they should be screwed. Like, even even if they go gigantic, right? Sprite Smashers were, like banishes the monster from your field, so there's no way gigantic can resolve. Um, yeah, I think. I guess they could go elf here, maybe, but I'm not too sure. Um, but realistically, I think they're definitely looking for a gigantic play. Um, and realistically, I need to save my droplet. Um, but now I get punished for them having smashers because smashers banishes on resolution. It does not target, and they do not select a target at the activation of that card. So what that means is, they use Smashers to banish their live twin kiss a kill. My droplet does not have a target to negate with, so it's useless. And then they're probably going to ban banish um, my banishment on the field. So I'm basically forced to activate this and just waste it. I mean, it, whether or not I use it or not doesn't doesn't really change the outcome. Um, I'm basically screwed. And you'll see something funny here. Yep, Panish Mirror Jade. Yep, and because they haven't used Lila, they use Lila to summon another Kiss Kill. And they go for Gigantic. The funny thing about Sprite, also, is that a lot of their monsters are actually pretty low statted. So even a uh, Gigantic at 32 is. Obviously not enough to go over that here. So they're kind of stuck in a weird scenario. And what they end up doing is they end up going for Sky Cavalry. And what there's what they are basically trying to do is just set it back to deck. And you'll see here. Sprite starter. And they lose. I think one thing that Sprite players just have to keep track of is uh a lot of people forget this, but Sprite starter subtracts like the amount of life points from like what you just summoned, like the attack value. Um, this guy did not realize that he was on 1,050 life points. So he activated Sprite starter to search blue and died. Um, so yeah, I ended up winning uh, a game that was I thought I was going to win, then I thought I was going to lose, and I ended up winning. All because I just sat there and I didn't even surrender. I was I genuinely thinking about pressing the button after Smite Smashers, Sprite Smashers, uh, which is a really, really strong card. Um, do not underestimate it. Um, after that card just completely out of my board. Um, but yeah, sticking sticking in these duels is, you know, you'll never know when you'll get the win. So, I think probably in another video I'm going to make, I'm going to show off a different deck list that I experimented with, which um, uses a, a different uh, package than most people use, um, which I thought was actually like pretty good. Um, but definitely I wanted to something that was more reliable um, and more like FTK-like. <laughs> 
versus the uh, sprite matchup. Pretty sure this was before sprite. This is when uh, Math Mech was uh, more meta, but um, this is the same season of gameplay, anyways. So what I do here is I'll be on the Shroud of Dragon. If you don't know, basically can send uh, Fallen of Albaz or one Brandis Spell and Trap from your deck to the graveyard. Um, so what I try to do with this card is to send Fallen of Albaz to the graveyard, which basically turns my Branded in Red from a brick to basically another way to get to Mass uh, Mirror Jade, right? Because I could do Branded in Red, add Albaz to hand, and start fusing. Um, this is a very nice way to play through interruption, um, and basically, you know, typically people see brand and red, and it's like kind of bricky, uh, which is why you don't, you know, people don't always want to play it at three. But uh, yeah, I basically use Albion Shrouded to turn my brand into reds all online. See here, they do Heat Soul to draw a card, Muscle Malibur, blah blah blah, gets hit with an effect veiler, okay. Just trying to bait out as much negates as they have. And I'm completely fine with this because I already have Brand Fusion in hand, lol. Um, aggravate Brand Fusion against Ash. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Um, if my Brand Fusion gets Ashed, I still have a way to play through it. Brand new Red adds back Albaz. Albaz fuses with Tragedy, which is basically almost like Brand Fusion exactly. <laughs> Rebellion, discard tragedy, I don't really need it anymore. Tragedy add to hand. Add adlib, I believe. Yep, adlib. Get Mirror Jade on board. Vanish card. Transcode. Go poly. Now he has to super factorial. Um, it was kind of awkward, like why he super factorial, like so late. I think he super factorials earlier and like has a way to negate my polymerization and kind of just wins. Um, yeah, I, I mean, even before that, like I'm not too sure why he held the super factorial like so hard, but he ends up doing it after the polymerization, which is like way too late. Yeah, he goes for Laplacian, pretty standard. He has a negate. Uh, given to him by Diameter, while also being able to uh, hand rip, send a monster that I control the graveyard, so Chimera. And, yeah. So, it's important to notice like how I do this chain link here. Um, what I basically want to do is make sure that Adlib resolves like 100%. Um, and the the idea behind that is that um, diameter, like the um, the sprite cards, is also a one effect, meaning that it has to negate what's immediately on the chain. Um, sequencing your cards in a way that protects your effects on the chain um, is like pretty much like how you play around stuff like this, and it's really important that you sequence your your plays correctly because a lot of people know like oh. Guardian Chimera Chain Link 1, Ad Libidum Chain Link 2, right? But the reality is I actually want my Mirror Jade to resolve here. Or not my Mirror Jade, I want my Mirror Jade back on the board. Um, I don't actually care if Guardian of Chimera pops or not. That that stuff doesn't actually matter to me. Um, so I do Guardian Chimera Chain Link 2, and he doesn't negate it. Um, he does end up removing it, but yeah. Prime Mathematical Location protects itself. Um, so yeah, he uses the Onset effect. I, I don't actually know... I'm not too sure if he does actually have a way to negate it as it, as Laplacian gets on field instead of using Laplacian's trigger to start sending stuff to the graveyard and hand ripping. But uh, he ends up choosing to hold the negate, which I'm a little bit worried about. So my basically, basically my options here are either to just banish and hit to phase, or uh, maybe hit to face or save the banish. Um, I'm actually not too sure um, which would be better. I know if I choose to banish now, um, I can get Titanic Clad 
to the graveyard, which adds me back Albaz. So now I have Albaz, and I can brand it in red for Adlib to basically make another Chimera um, line on my opponent's turn. Um, alternatively, because I already sent Albion to the graveyard earlier this turn, I can opt to just save the Mirror Jade Banish, just crash into Laplacian, and just save the Mirror Jade Banish for next turn. Um, I actually don't know which one is more correct here, but I instead choose to uh, use the Mirror Jade effect to banish the Laplacian. And I think he actually gets scared here, or he doesn't really know the ruling. Um, if you negate Mirror Jade's effect, Mirror Jade can use that effect next turn because the restriction saying also this card cannot use this effect next turn. This restriction is tied to the resolution of Mirror Jade's effect. If Mirror Jade is negated, he can still use the Banish next turn. And so this is actually really bad for him because I kill his monster anyways. Um, and then he still gives me a Banish. So I basically got the best case scenario by baiting him. Keep in mind, this is like Diamond 3. It's like people still make these really insane mistakes. Um, versus a deck that used to be, you know, the best deck in the format. Which is really surprising. People still st do stuff like Ash Blossom, Allure Darkness, Ash Blossom Patchwork. Even though the golden rule is, you know, um, Ashing Branded Fusion. It's kind of crazy how many people still don't know how to play against Branded Despia. Despite, you know, a lot of people saying that it's, you know, an easy deck. Um, or a brain dead deck, as some people call it. Um, but yeah, he has Harpy's Feather Duster. I'm I'm already crapping my pants. I add Adlib. He go spells the Brandon Red. I'm like, okay, no sure, I have called by, I can do that. And then my opponent has Cross Out. At this point, I'm losing my mind. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit. goes this, goes that, and what I'm basically saying here is, you know what, I'm banking my entire game on this. You do not have anything else relevant in hand. You know, the fact that you're going Subtraction Special Summon from hand to do a Sigma Revive, it's like, your hand definitely sucks. <laughs> and I'm basically saying, you know what, I'm going to pray that I banish your card and you don't have any follow-up. Yep, just ends, ends in that play. That last duel. Oh! <laughs> this is also the um, deck list where and my light target was instead Perform Pile 5 Very Remote Magician. And if you know anything about this card, this card is basically like a budget missing mine. It's honestly a little bit funny. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll probably make like a. Yeah, I'll make another video with like the deck list that I use um, for some of these earlier games in the season. Um, yeah, here we actually have an Adventure Brand of Despia Mirror Match, and they go full combo. And not just like full combo, I mean like full full combo. Um, and you'll see like what they end up having. Yeah, search branded banishment. Basically, I'm screwed. <laughs> they have, they have branded in red. They have like everything they could ever want for a mirror match. Unfortunately, they're still going to lose this game. So I basically gamble here, activate, pray for patchwork. They shouldn't negate this. Um, they should definitely hold on to it, and yeah. So what I do here is, I'm praying like my opponent. Well, actually, I do know what my opponent has. They have ad lib in hand. They don't have any hand traps. They have branded red, banded, branded banishment. 
and Griffin Rider. They have pretty much like I don't know, like four, four or five interruptions maybe. Uh, but basically, with Dropless in hand, I can basically try to attempt to play through this board, and uh, I don't have to worry about Ash Blossom. I don't have to worry about any more hard negates because I've ever been Droplet. And uh, yeah. From Bin Drop, let's send Brand Fusion. Or not Brand. Yeah, yeah Brand Fusion to negate the Griffin Rider. Oh, by the way, you can't use Griffin Rider as um, a fusion material for Brand to Red to, and still hope to use a Griffin negate because it has to shuffle the card back. So. Yeah. I do the typical play. You know, the opponent just has to watch. I sent 5 rainbow. I don't really need it in my hand right now, but this card is interestingly enough going to come up later. <laughs> so he granted the red I don't remember what he goes for. He goes for guard. Uh, realistically, I guess he could chain branded in red and try to like... I don't know, like make Drago Sepelia to try and contend with my Lubellion, but if I'm playing comedy, um, you know, I just I just tribute the Lubellion off the field and he basically loses a negate, so I guess he doesn't want to go for that. Um, but it does end up being like annoying if I am forced to go for comedy because I kind of want tragedy in the graveyard. So yeah, I chained Branded in red. This is, this is something that's important to recognize. Um, so I chain Brandon. You can chain Brandon in red to Lubellion. Um, and what this does is basically uses the Lubellion on field and takes like the material that's using in the graveyard to make another fusion monster. But Lubellion doesn't actually care whether or not it, it and its materials are banished. It will just shuffle itself back into the deck. So basically, you're going like like two for one kind of value, and I'm able to make Draco Stapelia here. Um, if you realize, my opponent, he, the only graveyard effects he's pretty much, he pretty much has is the opening, um, which protects him from destruction on his fusion cards. Um, but he does not have poly because he's not playing a poly engine, so I can still, I'm still able to target Chimera and negate its effect. So maybe make me graveyard, like I said before. Because his effects go on chain first. You know, I let that resolve. Blah 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 blah. Trigger Sepelia. To get Garden Chimera. He can't pop my stuff. Oh. <laughs> I think it's also important to recognize here how my opponent screwed himself over. Um, I almost forgot in this game. So, the important thing to notice about Branded Banishment. The trap card that basically fuses your opponent's monsters um, while also reviving a monster of your own only works when you have a Despia monster or a level 8 or higher fusion monster that was properly summoned already. Albion was not properly summoned, he was sent, he was sent to the graveyard cheated uh, by Mirror Jade. And Albaz is not a Despia monster or a level 8 or higher fusion. He actually removed it from the graveyard, his only target. With, by greeting the branded in red, trying to get tragedy to search Alibur in hand for follow up. But what he actually needed to do was branded in red for the Albaz because branded in red can retrieve Albaz, unlike branded banishment, which leaves him with the tragedy in graveyard to be able to fuse with my board. But he completely, um, he completely, I guess, missed that, um, and so he basically has a dead branded banishment right now. And only I only have to contend with the live mirror. Trigger. And we banish each other. Now I can go into Chimera. And Adlib Adlib will bring back the mirror jade. Also, it's important to notice that um, what is it? 
The opponent using Adlib on the Mirror Jade means that it was not fusion summoned anymore, it's special summoned. Um, specifically from, I think, the Banish Zone. So, Ad Libidum, uh, basically, or Mirror Jade, basically doesn't have the Raigeki end phase effect anymore, but mine was uh, Fusion Summoned from the extra deck. So, it does have that Raigeki effect. So, even if I don't, like, wipe the field right now, uh, I just need to get rid of Chimera. And then I could basically either attack over his monsters or let them get blown up by the effect. Revive back Mirror Jade, standard. Pop Banishment, just cause. Yeah, my opponent is screwed. Uh, 5 Rainbow Magician basically says that if I set a card, I can take it back from the graveyard, and now all of the monsters that he controls because he doesn't have any set cards can't activate their effects or attack. So, yeah, I could have used Chimera to maybe like, oh, actually Chimera popping the um, the opponent's Chimera wouldn't have done much because they have branded opening. So I just popped their back row instead. Don't really care about the Fateful Adventure. Um, I mean, they could they could do whatever they want with it. I'm going to clear the board anyways. Adventure token protects itself from attack wounds. I crash. Now my opponent's in a bad situation. I send opening to my graveyard, just just in case. And now they have to contend with basically what is a full back row of cards. Or almost full, but basically. Yeah, so they set brand and red, and yeah, but I have called by. Like, th there's almost nothing they could do from this scenario to win. Maybe if they get Harpy's Feather Duster, but yeah, I just go immediately for another Guardian Chimera, which shows that you know you should definitely be playing more than one. And I go for the pop too. Out of Albaz doesn't really do anything. There is my opponent actually is running Theater of the Branded, I believe it's called, or Despia Theater. Um, and I think a funny thing about Performer Pal Five Reaver Magician, Magician is that um, apparently setting cards in the field spell zone still doesn't even count to the to the requirement that you need to set cards in your back row to be able to play. Um, so my opponent could not activate Alibur there, which is kind of crazy. Uh, that card is a little bit insane. So yeah, those are my uh, five duels for the day. Um, I hope you enjoyed this unedited content. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. See you later.